All right, we'll straighten this out for you. I know you're confused. That was a bumper, allegedly showing you the kind of work our guest does. Our guest is E. Jean Carroll. In addition to taking questions on America's Talking every day between 3 and 4 in the afternoon, E. Four and five. Four and five. Hey, first specific error of a producer tonight, written 3 and 4. That's what Tom Snyder always says. Oh, what? What? How'd that happen? Oh, I'm sorry. Get that boy. Get Wayne Fong. Get him out here. Between 4 and 5 in the afternoon, E. Jean is going to be taking your calls on Talking Food tonight. 212-398-2300. So give us a call. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, you handsome rogue dog. Thank you, you woman who doesn't believe in marriage. That's why I'm... Are you married? Shaking your hands. Not right now. How long? How many times have you been married? Twice. How old were you the first time? How old was I the first time? At 30. Something like that. Oh, you were, so you were mature. Uh, well, hold it for a second. You've seen my work tonight. Yeah. I wasn't mature. <laughs> I wasn't particularly mature. Okay. But, wait, but wait. You're, you're against marriage, though. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not. I just want people to wait. They call into the show. I'm willing to wait. Little girls call in 20. They're going to get married. They yeah. haven't even dated more than two people. They don't even have a good job. They don't have any exhilaration. They've never Sounds had like the kind of person I, I'm looking for. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I actually have a very good relationship in my life, but I'm not married. I'm sort of on those outlaw. You're not going to get married again, are you? I'm an outlaw guy who lives with, I live with, like, a, you know, See, that's live smart. with somebody. Really? Unless you're going to have children. Well, then, then I might then get married. Then you might get married. Then I, I'm out. I do have a child. Do you well, have any children? Of course children? you do, no. Really? Do you want some? How do you feel about that? The what? fact that at this stage of your life you don't have any offspring? Yeah, but here's the way I look at it. I'm now devoting my life to helping others. Get out of here. You have a TV show. That's the main thing. That's it. I'm on TV. I don't right. need to date. I don't need anybody. That's right. right? There, you know, there, is no, there are no longer any first acts in American life. There are no, there, there, there are no first acts in American life. It all start, your life starts when you're on TV. And everyone in America, I think, is actually, on one level or another, trying to get on television. Everybody has a talk show. Most people. Look are. at the depths to which they have sunk. Right. You and I are on TV. Chogs. You and I, I. Could they get any lower? Oh, yeah. What, like who, with whom? Oh, we could go out. We could net some people down in uh, Thompson like Square Park and get them out here. It'd be lower. Yeah, you but, think? Yes. It is possible to go lower than we We would are. have Pam, the makeup woman, put some makeup on, do the hair, yeah. give them a little wardrobe. They'd be fabulous. I tell you, anybody can have a talk show. Anybody. Well, that, I think that that's the direction in which we're headed, that most people are, in fact, having talk shows. Yeah. We have somebody on the line with a question. You want to take Good it? Good God. I, I like doing this, but I'm, I'm going to give you the call. Do you want to take it? Let's viewer, take it. Let's or do you want to continue it. to chat with me? Let's chat with you. Chat with me. And then take the call. All right, Barbara and Decatur on the light, just, just hold on a second. I want to read something that you wrote. First off, you were Miss Cheerleader USA. You were. <laughs> you were Miss Cheerleader USA. Queen of all the cheerleaders. Queen of all the cheerleaders. Now, Can you imagine? Does that give you special access to the All-American team that year, the football team? It doesn't. How did you... In in this yeah. wide world we live in, how did you ever become Miss Cheerleader? They had me down at Disney World, and we led cheers. it starts cheers. much sooner than that in life. Why did you want to be a cheerleader? Because cheerleaders are the queens of young society. Cheerleaders are the height. Cheerleaders are the goddesses of grade school, high school, and college. So you wanted to be a goddess, and now, uh -huh. and that, is that, now has that sort of extended into being a columnist, being a goddess of information, no, being on television. No, after cheerleading, it was all downhill. No, no, I know what you mean. Know, Same yeah. for me after high school. It was, right. it was all you downhill. You loved the cheerleaders, didn't you? Uh, you I, actually, I actually, when I was at the University of Pennsylvania, they had male cheerleaders, and I actually tried out to be a cheerleader. You did. No, but I don't think my voice, which is, yes, I did. You I, I did. Absolutely what did you did. wear? A little skirt? I wore, no, no, what no. They, oh. they we're talking Ivy League schools had oh, okay. male cheerleaders. They still That's do. True. And uh, no, I remember distinctly. I'll stand up. I'll show you what Pennsylvania. we had to do. This is what we had to do. It was like this. We had to do a little thing like that. <laughs> help, yeah. wait, wait, wait. help wait, wait. Pennsylvania. What? Here, let's turn here. Let's see how high you can kick. Come on. Wait, come no. On. Male, male cheerleaders on. No, didn't no. kick. See. No, come on. Kick, kick. Let's see. Come on. Wait okay, a second. I don't, you know, the last time I did something like this, I, got to, I have to stretch. I have to stretch my hands. Let's do a little kick, Bill. Come on, babe. Can you kick up to my head? Whoa! I had. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you I'm going to do the radio shape. now. I'll see you, you later. <laughs> I can't. Oh, okay. Man. Whoa! Wow. Let's go to that phone call. Barbara, Kate, and help Cater. me. Help me here. Come on. <laughs> 
Good. Very good. <laughs> All right, thank you. We have Barbara. Save me here, Barbara. Oh, save you. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Decatur, Illinois. Yes, and it's... You're on. Okay, it's Mattoon, not Mattoon. Oh, oh, Jesus. Illinois. I'm sorry. Roll... <laughs> it's That's two mistakes. From here. Is that my mistake? How is it spelled? M-A-T-T-O-O-N. M-A-T-T-O-O-N. Uh-huh. Host's error. It's, pardon? Ho that's, that's my mistake. Oh. Okay. That's not Wayne Fong's error. Of course, okay. he now did hear me phone. read it during rehearsal. Okay. He heard the read, but I'll take the shot for you that You rehearsed? One. When did you rehearse? We, Kate and I ran through that opening eight or nine times. You never did. You, I saw you coming in here with 30 seconds no, no, I was to go. Reading, I was reading the thing to Wayne. Because Wayne, was, the way Wayne was nodding off. The producer said, Wayne, wake up. And I read the intro, and he got perked Wayne, up and interested in the show again. Yeah, I saw you in makeup five minutes before the show, and you came in here with, you know. Well, I read one. the intro to Wayne. I said, oh, okay. Mattoon? Right, I said, how okay. does that get to be the medical capital? He All didn't right. know. Right. So he had to read the press release and find out. Do you have a question for E. Jean here? We're wandering now. He gets to get back on the course. Yeah, I have a more serious question, very serious question. What is it? How do you get over uh, having a breakup after six years of being with a person? <laughs> ah. Were you married? No. And when did you break up? Uh, a week ago, Tuesday. Oh, huh. Oh, you're, still, you're in the rough. pain phase, that's, the big that's pain. That's rough. Do you have some good friends? Not really. See, that's what you need. You need some good girlfriends. Um, do you ha are you going to church? No. All right. Do you have a family? Yeah, but I don't talk to them because they didn't like the relationship. Oh, honey, see, this is the thing. You need somebody to turn to. I'm glad you called the show. Could, could some, in a case like this, um, could they move in with you, and could you help them personally? No, because you Just know checking. what? Here's the thing. Right, go Barbara, ahead. now, I know, you know, I, know you have, I know you have some friends there. Who's, who's the person you're closest to? It seems like my son, and he's 23. Okay. Here's the thing. You just need to sit down and talk this out with some people, right? Well, I go to a counselor once a week, and she's Good. been ill. So I've had to call the crisis center, oh. mental health, twice over this I breakup. Know. Honey, I, wh why did you break up? I found out he had, uh, I mean, I've known he's had other women in the six years. Mm. I mean, oh. he had enough nerve to bring her in the home when I had a breakdown and oh. had sex with her in my bed so oh. in front of my son. Oh, well, I'm glad that you broke him. up. Bar I mean, yeah, you know, Barbara, he your, was not. Your life is, your life is on... A better trajectory. I mean, you yeah. may be in pain right now, but say to yourself, why would I want to be with right. someone like that? Even though you've got the pain and the separation and all the things that go with it, why would you want to be with somebody who did that to you? And also, think of it like this. It's a storm, and it will pass. It may take a couple of weeks. It may not take a couple it's of weeks. longer than that. But you never months. know. Months. Maybe really? two years. Right. Two right. years? Together? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Her, Barbara, your heart is just broken, right? Barbara, do you have a job? No, I'm getting ready to go back to school. Uh, Good. Good. See, here's the thing, Barbara. Your life right now is in the bottom of a wave. Do you just feel like you're down at the bottom of something? Yeah. All right. On top of this, I'm 450 pounds. Oh, honey. Honey. You know what? You know what? It can go nowhere but up from now, Barbara. I'm telling you. Okay, so you don't... Are you drinking? I, I do, uh, with the medication that I take, I take Paxil, uh -huh. and with the medication I take, I can't have, you know, okay. alcohol. Okay, are you doing drugs at all? No. All right, so, you, okay, you're ahead, all right? You've got your son, you've got your counselor, yeah. right? Right now, don't worry about being overweight. That's the last thing you have to worry about, all right? I want you to feed yourself so you feel good, okay? Yeah. Eat four or five times a day, little meals, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel good. And do a little bit of exercise. Can you do five minutes a day? Yeah. That'll raise your spirits. Yeah. See, I dropped 130 pounds, and then I added it back on because after I found out what he had done to me while I was in the hospital with a breakdown. Many people, many people eat, obviously, substitute right. food for love. I think one of the smartest, what I would suggest would be get to somebody who is a specialist in handling uh, morbid obesity, put yourself on that program, Stay on the program. Do never waver from the program. Do exactly what the doctor tells you. After a long period of time, you will reemerge right. like a, a butterfly from, from a caterpillar. It's true. It's, it's true. true. It's, it's true. true, Barbara. Our best of luck. And our hearts go out to you, honey. Good luck, Barbara. And thank you very much.
All right, we'll take a break, and we will continue with E. Jean, E. Jean Carroll from America's Talking. We'll be back right after this. She's taking your phone calls at 212-398-2300. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, this is the Robin Lee Show. I'm Bill Boggs. In for Robin Lee Show. Our guest is E. Jean Carroll. You saw a sale before, actually a monologue type a part of her show on America's Talking. She takes people's questions and comments. Uh, let's get right to another call, and then I want to ask Wait a minute. You. I want to ask you, how come you know so much about women? Because you handled that call really well. Life. Yeah, are you have are you, you were particularly tender with her though. Well, geez, I've broken up with somebody. I know what it feels like. I've been there. But you talked to her. I, you know, I've been like the cover of Only the Lonely in my life. I know what it feels like <laughs> to really be in the pits. How many times have you been in love? Really in love. Eh, three. Three. Something like that. You said, talking that. to any of them? I talked. Yes, I have. I have. I, I have very good relations with the people with, That's with a whom good I have sign. gone through and going out of life. How about you? You've been married twice. Mm -hmm. Get along with your ex-husband? Very very well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm actually uh, very close friends with my uh, ex-wife, uh, Leslie Bennett. But do you flirt with her? I flirt with no, my no, ex-husband. No. I don't even flirt with people I am not mar wasn't married to. I'm oh, not a flirter. I, oh, why Never not? have been. Never, never, never got the art of flirting down. Well, you're flirting right now. No, I'm not. You flirt with the camera. That's different. That's an <laughs> inanimate object. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> See, I'm like I told you, I never got flirting uh, down. You got All right, it, let's man. go to Jody. Oh, I remember. There was it. once a Jody, actually. There was a yeah. Jody. This probably isn't that Jody. Jody, you're on the line. Where are you calling from, Jody? I'm calling from Champaign, Illinois. Whoa, another Illinois. Okay, yes, Jody. I'm near Decatur. What can we do for you? <laughs> well, I'm calling because I'm a 49 year old single woman who's never been married. I consider myself well-educated, but at the same time, I find it difficult to meet gentlemen who are of the caliber I want to date. Oh, Jody, this, there, nothing in the whole world is easier. You live in Champaign? That's a university town, right? Yes, it is. All right. Do you like sports? Well, I do, and I'm closely involved not only in sports, but all the arts here in the city. Uh, Jody? So, yes. Do you like freshmen? <laughs> Just checking. Just right, checking, yeah. Jody. We need to get the complete profile before we can help you. Go ahead. Keep Here's going, Eugene. Now, Jody, uh, pick up the sports pages. Read them. you got to learn how men think and where the athletic events are, right? Okay. You know where the baseball games are, the softball games, the volleyball games? You show up, Jody, with a cooler full of beer. All right? They're going to be hot and sweaty playing. You have, right? This is what you do. Yes, you bring him a beer. Oh, hi. Yeah, right at the softball game. It's a okay. great way to meet a guy. All right, good. Uh, do you like bars, Jody? I, I have frequented them, and what I find is they're only interested in one-night stands, and that's not my pleasure. All right. I, I, I'm a, a, a more, well, I've got more in life to offer people than one-night stand. You got a great dog, Jody? Actually, I have a beautiful cat named Maxie. Uh, get a dog. Get a big, muscular, macho, Beer and rogue dogs. dog. That's it. Right. Walk that dog four times a day, right? She's going to be out for a romantic encounter. By the encounter. door. Walk right. the dog by, by the, the door. Do get out of here with that freshman. Hey, you know, it's a different world. Yeah, if you're talking to a 49-year-old man, idea you'd idea ask him if he was interested in I'm freshmen. Like humor. Well, women. Women. <laughs> Fresh women. All right, go ahead. Keep going, Eugene. Uh, let's see. What kind of car do you drive? Well, I, I have a Buick Regal. No! Yeah, you got to tell me fast that. fast and sporty. Get a, a, a Ferrari. Yeah, right. So you get a dog, you have $1,000 for a dog, and a couple of cases of imported beer and a Ferrari. You got a man! That's Boy, all it. I need is $30 million and I'll be in shape, right? That's, the thing is, you got to just leave your house, Jody, and just get out there. The best place to meet men is on the street. You just see somebody cool coming toward you, stop him. Drop your purse, drop your change, hand him a beer, hand him a $5 bill. If you see somebody who say, my name is such and such, that's how you do it. The street is the number one place to meet so, a guy. So, it's, In other words, what, what we're suggesting here is that you open up like a, a, a portable beer business. No. You actually <laughs> go around giving beer to people. You know, it's like the Johnny Appleseed of Budweiser. It's going from street to street until somebody comes home with you. That's it. All right, we have, thank you very much. Good luck. And uh, if you're in New York City, I'll recognize you. Phil from New York. Phil, you're on the line. Hey, how you doing? Fine. How are you, Phil? Okay. Good. I got a question. Go. Uh, I had a relationship with somebody for about 10 years and uh, on and off. And she just like, just ignores me now altogether. 
I'm wondering whether it's worth renewing they, the relationship. They must be married. Are you married, Phil? No, never. She's ignoring her, you and you're not married. Never. Are you living together? No. And are you dating? We were. And you're not dating anymore? No. She She's just, not interested in you anymore. When a woman stopped to, started ignoring you, that they just lose it. That just is a Ten big... Ten years is this? Well, she like calls when she needs you. Honey, she's not good for you, right, Bill? So, you know, if she's well, not loving you and wanting to be with you... You know, many times, the most tantalizing thing for a man or woman is the person who is rejecting them. They chase. The chase sometimes is much more exciting than the actual capture or the conquest. So what to do is recognize that. That you're into this chase, you're all upset because you're chasing her. Forget it. Find somebody who's right. going to chase you. That's it. <laughs> I bow before you. I'd bow, sir. except I pulled my leg in the first oh, segment. All right, okay. all right, do we have any other calls? We don't. No, not right now. Vamp for a minute? <laughs> I can do it. They're, Actually, they're, I have a, what, what you, you speak, you speak. I'll I want read. to hear more about you. You do? Yeah, I want to hear more about you. You have a great understanding of people's hearts. Well, Thanks, I appreciate that. Now, do you think deeply on these things? What do you read? I, I am um, extremely instinctive. What, do you go home at night and read? What do you do? I read, uh, no, I mostly read, in the, uh, I read a fair amount in the morning. Newspapers, what? magazines, periodicals. Are you reading novels? No, I, haven't, I haven't read any novels this year, no. Are you doing movies? I, yes, I, I, I enjoy movies. I, uh, the most recent movie I saw was a movie called The Net. Typical, yeah, how is it? Typical of American movie. A commercial American movie starts out really draws you in with a wonderful sort of first half of the first act of the movie. Yeah. You think it's going yeah. to be a good movie, yeah. and then it gets more and more and more preposterous until it makes it's making no sense whatsoever. It's like a combination of a computer movie and The Fugitive. Oh, that's uh, too bad. She was not, she not a good great, movie. Though. Sandra Bullock is cool. an excellent actress, and right. is somebody I think Phil would probably enjoy meeting. The fellow we just talked to in New York. Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Phil and Jody actually maybe. Phil and Jody together. Well. That's not a bad idea. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and uh, that's it. Welcome back to the Robin Leach Show, Talking Food. I'm Bill Boggs, in tonight for Robin Leach, live right now with E. Jean. Her show is called Ask E. Jean. It's on America's Talking between 4 and 5 in the afternoon every day. That's East Coast time, correct? Yes, it is. It is better looking, you or Robin Leach? I, I never comment on things like that, but I think Robin Leach is better looking since I'm you substituting so? for him, yes. <laughs> Indeed, I do. He certainly is better looking when he's at his house in the Caribbean right. looking yeah, out at the sea, right. you know. That's yeah, right. Rob is a good guy. I had Robin Leach on my, one of, I've, I've hosted about nine different shows in my career. And I had this show, which I did for a while, called Midday. And Robin I Leach was on that, he was on that, that was show. That big deal show. When he was, right, yeah, it wasn't that big a deal. It really wasn't. In fact, many of those shows were terribly, were terrible shows. It got, like a, got like a rundown shoe. It really did. It's just everybody, you know, the cameramen were sitting on oh, stools. <gasps> we didn't have on, audiences. Explain what's sitting on a stool. We had guests coming in like this. The producers were, you know, were playing. It, it, a show needs to be revitalized. It I does. did that for too long. I should have. Yeah. Sh I did it for almost 12 years. I should have done it for six years. Just yeah, stay, right. But it was one thing that I was doing while I was doing a lot of other things. But anyway, Robin Leach was a guest on that show when oh, he was still a reporter goodness. for the star. Boy, look how far he's come. He's, oh, he's smart. He's Robin Leach is smart. You know what he always says? Keep it light. Yeah. Keep it light. Right. right. Keep it light. I want to ask you a question. Uh -oh. I read that you were going to go on a hitchhiking trip, that you were going to drive across the yeah. country with a gun under the seat of your car, right. pick up every hitchhiker yeah. on the back roads, and then get to L.A. and write about it I'm if you live. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing when, it. How is that working? Well, it's been put off a little bit because uh, I'm doing a book for Simon & Schuster. Good. Ask E. Jean. Ask E. Jean. No, it's going to be called A Dog in Heat is a Hot Dog. <laughs> So that's going to be finished by September. And right. then I'm going to get in the El Dorado, 71 El Dorado. Uh, I drive a butter. 68 Mercury convertible. Oh, really? Yeah. Bought what it color? when it was new. Really? Yeah. Four door? No, it's a convertible. Only the what Lincolns. Color? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a forest green. Very nice. Yes, yeah, very nice. I'm the original owner, 187,000 miles. Now that would be good for, uh, what was her name? Who's 49, looking for a man? That would be. Jody, that would be just perfect. She could get five Thank men in that car if she wanted. She have that's the kind of car to ride around in, though. It and so you're going to get in your El Dorado. Right, and go across the country, picking up every... Haven't you ever always wanted to pick up those hitchhikers? No, I have no desire to pick. When I'm stars. driving along, I'm just happy with myself. I don't need total strangers, sometimes uh, dangerous-looking people sitting next to me. <laughs> I am happy. I enjoy my own company. I don't need... Hey, look, there's a guy with a knife stuck Honey, in his belt. Let's do, let him into the car babe, and he can come with us. This is what you do for a living. You talk to weirdos. 
I'm do but I prefer to do it on television, not That's in the Merck when I'm driving along with total strangers. Why, look, four people who look like they're homeless right. and haven't eaten for three right. days. Climb in, folks. But don't you want to hear where they've been and why they're hitchhiking? No, I'm going to read going? your book. All right. And you're going to tell me about it. All right. It's going to be cool. good, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. That's an excellent, excellent idea. Now, where did you get this Cadillac? Oh, I just got it. It's pretty new because I'm into very old classic But Let me cars. tell you something. Make certain before you get off on this trip that you get a mechanic check every element yeah, of that no, car. I just blew the you get on the road thing. with oh, a '71 oh, vehicle. I, yeah, it doesn't repair that easily. I once had a car. The Merc had to be towed from almost Penn State to my house in Connecticut because of a sprocket problem. A sprocket. It wasn't a sprocket. I can't remember the. Title. You don't love that car enough. See, if it had been my car, I, I would don't have gotten love it. Out and it would have pushed it personally. You know, personally. All the way up to New York. Sure. Right. Exactly. Sure. I'm taking my dog. All right. We have a clip here of uh -oh. E. Jean. We haven't we seen pump. enough clips? For no, goodness sake. We haven't sake. seen enough clips because this, this is the break. This is when we can neck while this is oh, on. Let's cool. take a look, right? All right. Now. Um, I called in once before about a, pro a friend who had a problem. She was pregnant and didn't tell her mother. And Tanya, I remember you so well. Do you? I remember you had a little, little friend who had left home and had run off and she was with some pretty nasty characters, mm -hmm. drug dealers if I remember correctly, yeah. and she unfortunately was pregnant and you called and didn't know what to do. Well, so, I, I told her mother. I told you to tell her mother, did it work? Well, yeah, she came home, her mother took it to the doctor, she lost the baby. But things are going really great for her now, she's staying home, She's getting her life back together. She's getting a job. Oh, thank God. And your advice just worked really great, and I'd just like to thank you. Well, you're handling some serious... I mean, we're joking around a lot, but you're handling some serious stuff Yesterday, on your show. Yesterday, we had a woman call in who was terminally ill, was dying of cancer, and her husband had packed his bags and was leaving the house oh. because he was having an affair with another woman. Is that... We know part what is actually doubly sad about that is that in that situation the person has to call a total stranger on television no but we're no. finding this out americans have this self-reliant attitude and they don't want to turn to lawyers they don't want to turn to psychotherapists and there's this sort of woman on television who's walking back and forth they will call me that you and get... we hear these tragic yeah stories but maybe some other woman somewhere or some other man will see that and that will help him well serious question what sense of responsibility do you have Huge. in terms of giving them advice could you be sued for example if you said something like you were saying tonight get beer hand out beer what 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 is your liability i don't know no it's never come up well will you column? please sign this waiver for us yes, because it. yes. it's never it's never come up at all it's never come up. I want to ask you one thing from, the, from today's headlines. You, t you talk a lot about marriage on your right. show. I read this in the paper. This is from today's New York Post. Take a look. Christy Brinkley pulls the yeah, plug, amazing. right? Seven months of marriage. And it says here, insiders say Christy, 42, is angry that You can talk read that without glasses? Yes, I can. You're a young guy. But My insiders God. say Christy, 42, is angry that Taubman isn't as rich as she thought. <gasps> well, see... Money is very important to women. Very important. Just like looks are important to men. That's right. Money is important to women because they want to know that they can be taken care of. When they have the child, they want to be taken, have the security. Yeah. Right? That's right. important. It's important. But what a, what a spin on, the, on a marriage, though, after seven months. She, she finds out, I mean, if that's true. How do you well, find out? Well, we don't out? know if that's true. Your credit true. cards, you know, you're up to 10000 I don't know, but it, it's, it's deeply important to women. Well, that's, that's a good insight money. into that. Let's take a call from all the way out in Los Angeles. Sandy is on the line right now. Go ahead, Sandy. You're on. Um, hi, Eugene. Hi, hon. I'm a great fan of yours. First Thank you, honey. This is kind of follow-up to what you were talking to Jody about. Um, I, my problem isn't finding a man. I've had a couple um, good relationships the last couple of years where I've been courted very nicely by men, and then when I've decided to get in the relationship, they end. And... Uh, ha. It happened a couple times, and I don't like the pattern, so I'm oh. trying to figure out if if it's the chase thing or if it's Sandy. That. Here's are you? I think you're probably how late? Are, how how long are you waiting before you have sex with them? I'm uh, not. That's the thing. Not waiting or not having. <laughs> not waiting. Go ahead. Wait, wait. And uh, you know what? There, uh, anthropologists are now finding out there's something called the ejection module that works with human beings. If you ha meet somebody, have a lot of sex, a lot of sex, a lot of sex, 
there's something that comes down in, into, into our hormonal system or in our brain pan way back here that you move on. Because if you're not getting pregnant, if you're not having children, if you're having sex right away, that's just that fun thing. And the human beings maybe biologically are programmed to move on. And that may be happening with you. The men are not taking you seriously. They're, you're going to be good time and then they're going to move on. Does that make sense? It, it makes a lot of sense, and I'm wondering, I mean, it would have to be pretty instinctual because I'm talking, I'm older, and I'm talking about men who have kids and are divorced and, you know, supposedly aren't looking to start a new family. If yet. you want to have a serious, I mean by serious, engaged, be engaged, right, Bill? That's you right. You have to wait. You have to, uh, you have to be coy and reserved. Right, Bill? <laughs> At Just least, like you are. At least until the end of the date. No, I'm telling no, you, you have to I, wait. I, I, I believe that E. Jean has given you very good advice. The, the longer that you can emotionally and right. Hold out on your own because you have your own desires. You right. shouldn't be seen as just the men are the only no. ones that want, want to have sex. Point. Obviously, you have wanted to have sex or you wouldn't have done it. But the thing is, I think that from a man's standpoint, you're going to soon know if the person is really interested in you if you're not having sex with them and not making love with them. But they're really interested in you as a human being. They will stay. If not, they're out of there. You are so good. I'm the oracle. You are that's the what, oracle. That's no, a, that's what my girlfriend calls me, the oracle. That's what I've never... She calls you the oracle? Oh, my she's, God. She's the oracle. Has spoken. She calls I, you I'm the sorry. oracle. She calls me the oracle. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry I revealed it. I know it's a bit of my private life. Who cares? They call me at home. I'm called the Oracle.